Radio Bypass, bringing you rock and roll music that deserves to be heard. Discover new bands. Hear some old favorites on Radio Bypass. Hey, Rockers. Today we are joined by a past guest of the show, uh, someone that we love very much here at Radio Bypass, who put out a killer single this year. And we are talking to Zach Bear. How you doing, Zach? Yeah. Good, Ralph. How you doing, buddy? Thank you for uh, having me on again. Yeah, my pleasure. It's good to see you. I like the uh, Songs of White Lion shirt. I did not get to catch uh, that little tour oh. as it came through the U.S. That was uh, amazing. Uh, just phenomenal. Very, very, very good show. I I'm jealous. I'm jealous you got to catch <laughs> me. <laughs> so, Zach, it's great hearing, hearing your music, you know, um, over the last few years, it seems like you're putting out one, two, maybe three singles each and every year. Um, and, and they're all great. But the latest one, Black, um, I, I'm feeling like this may be your best one yet. I really, really love the song. Um, so, so tell us about that. How do you feel about that song? Do you think it's your best yet? You know, it's it's different than a lot of my other songs. It, it's a lot darker and a lot heavier. Um, <clears throat> that song, actually, I wrote it a long time ago and kind of sat on it. And um, it actually, it, it's based on a true story. So I used to live in uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for many years, like 14 years. And um, <clears throat> during the time I lived there, there was a big... Um, like crime scandal where there was a lady that uh, claimed that her kids were killed by an intruder and turns out she actually stabbed him to death, you know, so not to make this, it's not a light subject, obviously, but um, when that happened, it was really, it was a big ordeal, you know, in our, in our city. And I ended up writing a song about that, uh, you know, about that episode. Uh, it's about Darley, uh, Darley, Darley Routier, um, and, uh, you know, like basically she had claimed that an intruder had come in and stabbed her kids to death. And it turns out that all the forensic evidence pointed to her doing it. And she is sitting on uh, death row. It's been sitting there for, you know, 20 something years now. Uh, but that's what the song's about. And the actual, uh, if you listen to the song in the middle of the song, there's a 911 call. And that's actually her calling 911, uh, during that, that mm -hmm. episode. Wow. Wow. A little darker than my usual theme, I guess. Now I'm almost sorry I like it so much because that's a <laughs> simple story. <laughs> Thank you, man. But it made a killer song. Thank you, man. Well, I mean, you know, there's people with black hearts out there, and that's kind of what that's about, you know? Yeah. 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 I I like that. I, yeah. I don't like thinking about that. I only like seeing the light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. Me too, man. But it's reality, right? It's part of uh, part of our world. So it's life. I mean, it is. You know, I mean, just uh, the way it is. But uh, you know, I mean, it. I, I do. I do really like the song. I think it's one of my my better songs. And my producer uh, Skid Mills, of course, he has produced bands like Saving Abel, Three Doors Down, and Pop Evil, and Skillet, and a bunch of other ones. I was real fortunate to have him work with me on that single. So I, I think it came out great. That's awesome. Are you are you playing everything on there, or you got other guys playing on it? Uh, I play uh, several of the instruments, and then I have uh, other guys that that you know that, that that play their parts as well. You know, and Skid played on it as well. Yeah, so I don't play everything on that one. Yeah. Gotcha. So what's ahead for you? What's what's twenty twenty four looking like for you? Man, I wish I could say I'd just be laying on the beach doing nothing, but I don't think that's gonna. That's going to happen, really, you know. Um, How about uh, your businesses? Yeah, good, you know. Um, I've got three of them in Florida now, uh, the Rock House Live locations. And, and uh, well, two Rock House Live locations, another one called Club 201 in downtown St. Pete. Then i got three more in, in Tennessee, and it's all going well. And um, then on the venue side, we just wrapped up a tour with Matchbox 20, uh, recording them all across the country for their their world world tour and hopefully we'll get back on the road with them in February in Australia. So, you know, it's, it's busy, you know, I, I, I'm not being, have not been able to play as much as I want to, but I'm hoping that'll fix itself in the spring. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know how you have time to handle everything that you handle. <laughs> it's, it's a little challenging sometimes, you know, and it, 
I, I just like everything I do is about music though. And I love music and I love making people feel good. So that's, you know, that's what I do, you know, and it's not work to me. It's uh it's fun. Right. Oh yeah. No, uh, obviously you wouldn't, you wouldn't take all this on if you didn't love it. Uh, no, I would not. No, the beach and, and a guitar in my hand and a margarita in the other hand sounds pretty good. <laughs> it does sound pretty good. Oh yeah. Well, hopefully you get a little break, you know, with hot, with the Christmas and new year's holidays and all that. Uh, hopefully you rest it up a little bit and ready to hit the ground running for 24. Yeah. What's rest. I don't know what that is. I mean, I really, honestly, yeah, I, I but in all, in all truthfulness, I, I don't want to do anything this holiday season. I want to do absolutely nothing and recharge and be ready to hit the, hit the, hit the ground running. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So do we have any um, plans for another, because it seems like you've been pretty consistent. We have plans for another single or two. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got one or two in the can uh, that I'll probably, you know, put out next cycle after this one really runs its course. <laughs> I've not shot the video for black yet, but um, I'm going to try to do that in the next, uh, you know, 30 to, you know, 60 days or so and, and get that out there. And then, you know, once summertime comes around, I've got uh, another one or two that I'm considering, um, you know, making the next single. Good, good. Look forward to hearing more from you for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, it's a, I, I'm, I'm one of these guys that I, I don't sit down and I can't rate 10 songs in a week. You know, it just takes, for me, it's longer. It comes to me gradually and it's a process. And then um, I'm somewhat a perfectionist and, even though it may not be perfect in my my head, I want it to be perfect. So I'll try to get the song as best as it can be. Then I'll take it to my producer and let him, you know, put the polish on it. Right. Well, it's good to get a different set of ears anyway. It's a must. Yeah. Really you good. could record one song and spend two years on it and still end up with nothing that you're happy yeah. with. Right? So you got to get perspective from other people for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because like a lot of these songs I wrote a long time ago, but I'm learning that a lot of artists, um, including like Rob Thomas, who, who I worked with, um, they write these songs years ago, you know, and they have one or two, three different iterations of that song. And then finally they get with a producer and it turns into a hit song. So I don't feel so bad because, I, you know, they might be old songs, but once you have, you know, have them in the can for a while and then have a, a producer that really has a good ear and second set of ears, like you said, um, uh, that's when the magic really starts to happen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Jay, don't be too hard on yourself. I'm glad to hear you don't think that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know, man. You know, it's just, I try to do the best I can and I, I hope that I make people, you know, emotive, I guess, when they hear my music. I want, I want to touch people with the music. Well, you have, I, uh, you know, um, matter of fact, just so I don't screw up the title, because because this other song of yours that we, we talked about before, but um, it definitely was emotive as well. Um, well, Ordinary Girl, too. I remember the story on that one. But I think the one that I was thinking about, too, was was Fight. I really liked how that made me feel as well. Um, I just, I didn't, I thought for some reason I thought it was a two word title. I haven't listened to that in a little while, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you, you do, you, you definitely, you, you know, it, it, the songs obviously come from your heart and, and it comes through. So it, do, it doesn't get lost in the recording process. Uh, you definitely hear it. Well, you know, I mean, a, a good song is, you know, you want it to transcend generations at the end of the day and, you know, um, if you touch somebody with that song, it will. You know, and, and I, I've, you know, I have several favorite songwriters that of mine that I that I feel like have influenced me. Don Henley and the Eagles being, you know, those type of songwriters, and um, you know, Rob Thomas to a certain degree. You know, he really tells stories with his songs, and you know, you 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 hit that emotion, and you pass along a message in a lot of cases. And that's kind of what, what I try to do, you know, and it's not like, you know, some bands write for themselves and I guess I write for myself to a certain degree, but I also think about, Hey, is this going to touch somebody else? Is it going to make them feel a certain way? Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think that's why it's takes so much longer for me to write a good song because I'm really 
you know, trying to to think about it and feel how I would feel if I listened to that song and it wasn't me writing it. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. It, you mentioned Don Henley. You know, I've I've, I've said to people many times. You know, his his songs uh, lyrically, especially, do do touch me. Like Heart of the Matter, I still think oh. is one of the best written songs of all time. I just think it's uh, a that, that, you, that's probably my favorite all time song. Uh, back in, I mean, throughout my musical career, I've always covered that song. And oh, I'll have never, you? Oh yeah, and never forget. Um, um, Right when I first started playing professionally in Houston, and this is in the early 90s, um, we were playing an outdoor place called Sam's Place. And afternoon, you know, it was afternoon gig or whatever. And I had just broken up with my girlfriend at the time. And I was in like, I was in a mood. And we played that song. And as an artist, you know, when you're playing a song, you just get caught up in it. You get in a bubble, you know, you're in that bubble. And uh, when the song ended, I came out of the bubble and looked out, and there's two girls sitting at the table just bawling their eyes out. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I just did my job. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that had to feel pretty good. Yeah, it was a, you know, that's, 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 it was pretty incredible. Yeah. And that was back when I was super green. I mean, I've probably been playing maybe six to eight months professionally at that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that's great, Zach. I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I just always appreciate talking with you. And I'm glad you keep making music. You're a good guy, good musician. Well, dude, I appreciate you making room for little old me with all the rock stars you talk to, man. I mean, like, <laughs> come on. I mean, it, it's up and down. It's a roller coaster, you know. Very, very flattered, you know. And I, I just appreciate that, you know, I, I just, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the. Uh I feel the same way, you know, Zach. I feel so blessed that I get to talk to people like you and 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 all the musicians I get to talk to because music, uh, I think we've probably had this discussion before, just was everything for me my whole life since I was a little kid. And um, to, to be able to talk to the people creating it that I know are probably beside myself because I'm so into it, I'm probably kind of a music geek, I guess, and I think only musicians really can understand my deep feelings for the music, you know? Uh, so yeah. it's a joy for me to meet fellow music lovers that love it to the, in the way that I do, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm I, I just don't seem to have a lot in common with like the casual listen, music listener. Yeah. You know, cause I, I listen to everything, you know, and I love, like every time you listen to a song that you've heard before, even on a different set of speakers or something, you suddenly hear a little something in that song that maybe you hadn't heard before. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm always revisiting music that you think you know in and out, but I love setting up different speakers and, and different amps and listening to it again. And, and, and sometimes you forget the little nuances that are in the song, you know, you, you, you memorize the chorus or something, especially a song that you've heard for a long time. But there's all these little itty bitty things that most people don't notice or even care about. But to me, I'm like, man, that was brilliant. You those, might just nuances, those nuances are what makes the song. Yeah. That's, that's that can be the tiny little, tiniest little nuances can be the difference between an okay song and a hit song. You know? Yes. And, it could be just a slight chord variation, you know, and it, that's, that's what really does it. That's what sets it apart, you know, and exactly and fascinating how people put those things together and how creative they are and coming up with, with some of that, you know, never ceases sure. to me. Yeah. Me neither. Me neither. I wish I had that talent, but I don't, but at least I get my wish and I get to talk to those of you that do. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you brother. Hey. All right. Well, Zach, pleasure. Can't wait to hear more music from you. We're going to play Black at the end of this again um, so people can hear it if they missed it when we've played it before. And always a pleasure having you stop by and look forward to more music from you in 24. And you guys, um, we're recording this right now just before Christmas, but Zach is actually going to be our first chat of 2024. <laughs> so happy holidays, my friend. Happy holidays, man. Hope you have a great uh, Christmas and a New Year's and 
looking forward to uh, talking to you again in 24. Absolutely. All right, everybody, stick around. Check out Zach Bear. This is Black.